Well, thank you for coming out today, everyone. Welcome to another installment of Cooking Well. My name is David Gorberg. I'm the general manager of the 705 Cafe. And beside me is my right arm and my close confidant, someone who deserves an extra special round of applause, executive chef of the 705 Cafe team, executive chef Elias Neto. Please give him a round of applause. So Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. It's great food and great people. No gifts, right? So uh, it's my opportunity to go all out for my friends and my family to be creative without losing sight of the core dishes that you'll find at most every holiday Thanksgiving turkey table. And a lot of those dishes are very heavy, aren't they? There's the white potato you mash. There's the orange potato you candy. There's the stuffing. There's the other stuffing. There's the, the, the uh, gravy. There's the pie. There's the other pie. And all of these dishes are, they're just heavy. No wonder why we fall asleep right after we're done eating. You know, the people that made it are so tired, and the people that ate it, they act like they're so tired because they just can't help themselves. You know, the average turkey dinner, if you have a scoop of everything, is almost 6,000 calories. Some people eat that on five-day work week, 6,000 calories. So that gives you a little better idea of, of what you're going through in a matter of two to three hours. So just to let you know. The dishes that I've chosen for you today, they're going to afford you three things. There's variety, there's flavor, and hopefully, if done right, it'll afford you a bit of precious time. Because at the end of the day, spending time with your friend and family is what's truly priceless. And with that said, we have a couple of special things that we need to celebrate today. Not sure how many of you know this, but Tufts Health Plan was recently named a healthy champion by the American Diabetes Association. And so with that said, we're also celebrating National Healthy Lunch today with another installment, yet another installment of Cooking Well. So without further ado, let's get cooking and let's have some fun. Now you guys know, this is an interactive demo. We'll be taking volunteers today. Elias and I, we know how to cook. We went to school for this. We spent our whole life doing this. When we go home at night, we cook dinner too. Not because we have to, but because we're craving something or because we know what we can turn into something just with a few special ingredients. So it's no biggie for us, but we've put together a few key ingredients to let to give you guys a better idea of some cooking techniques, some simple skills, some knife cooking skills. We've got, we're making a roux today. We're, we're shucking corn today. We're teaching you how to, how to get the seeds out of a pomegranate. We're gonna teach you how to cut an avocado without using a knife. Little things like that that you can share with children. You know, guys, this is how you be social with your family. You can grab them together and say, come on, let's go hang out in the kitchen. That's the best place to hang out, right? In the kitchen. So um, there's nothing more gratifying to offer these hints and tools than to have someone come up to us a month later and go, hey, remember that dish we did last year? Someone will come up to us and say, I made that at home. I brought it to a party. I brought it to a barbecue. Or I made it for dinner. Or hey, I pan seared properly for the first time. I threw it in the oven. I used my meat thermometer, I took it out at 145, I let it rest, rest for five minutes, and it was perfect. And for the first time, I did pork tenderloin perfectly. Or for the first time, I did chicken and it wasn't dry because in my house, I grill the chicken dry. So it makes us feel, you guys know what I'm talking about? It makes us feel good to have someone just give us that feedback. So that's, that's all we're here for, guys, is just to support your culture. So and. Sometimes you guys come up to us and tell us great recipes or say, hey, we'd like this in the cafe. You know, I'm thinking about this or I'm craving this and I really don't know how to cook it. So what do you think? So we love to do things like that too. Um, so in today's lesson, we'll be showing you some healthy holiday side dishes. We've got a Mexican street corn salad. We're going to be doing a creamed kale with caramelized shallots. We're gonna be doing a spinach feta sun-dried tomato baked stuffed mushroom. And last, I've saved the best for last, we're gonna be doing an appetizer today because it's part of Thanksgiving, right? 
And we don't really need a lot of appetizers on Thanksgiving because there's a lot of food. So we're going to try not to make it too unhealthy. But we're doing a holiday pomegranate toasted walnut guacamole. So that's my favorite one today. Saved it for last on purpose. And again, all of these dishes can be prepared ahead of time because the key word here is time. I hear you. It's something we don't have enough of. We wish we had more. So start with the holidays. Make these dishes all ahead of time, the day before. Throw them in your fridge. Everything here can be served cold that we're doing. And even the creamed kale, throw it in the microwave. You can make it the day ahead, OK, guys? So I think we should start. So um, Mexican street corn, anybody had it at a vendor, street vendor? It is the number one most popular street vending food in the world right now. Usually, it's uh, grilled corn on the cob, either um, on a stick or it's shucked, and they leave the, uh, the husk on the corn so you have something to hold it with. And it is grilled, so it's got a nice char on the corn. And then they'll roll it in a seasoned butter, in a seasoned butter, and then they'll roll it in a queso fresco after that, which is just a crumbled, soft, mild Mexican cheese. And then they'll season it with a little, like, uh, Goya Sazon, just a little bit of seasoning. That's it. And then you walk around the streets eating it. That's the number one most popular street vending food in the world. So this is my inspiration because we're such a diverse crowd. This you can serve cold, warm, or hot. You can take it right out and serve it as a cold salad in the summertime too as well, guys. All right? So Chef Elias was nice enough to grill a whole batch ahead of time. We were able to, to acquire some shucked corn on the cob from Florida still. You can take a frozen bag of corn, put it on a sheet pan, preheat your oven to 350, a little bit of olive oil, toss it up, throw it in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes on 350. As Soon as it gets a little golden, take it out, throw it into a mixing bowl or on a low, big saute pan. And Ruth, when, you got your gloves on yet? Yep. First thing we do, wash our hands, gloves. Kids, adults, grown-ups, anything alike, Wash our hands, throw on some rubber gloves. If you're not at home, just wash your hands, okay? Ruth, put about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of oil in there. That's just to do a nice coat on the corn, okay? So you've either roasted your corn or you've grilled it on the, co on the cob. You set it up on the edge, and you're just going right down the cob like this. I like to leave those big chunks in there without breaking it up because it'll break up for you, and that makes it nice and pretty in the salad like that or if it's already pre-roasted. So Chef Elias is going to drop all of that into our warm saute pan. Ruth, the next item you're going you're gonna to mix into there, we're just going to make this like a creamy salad. So it's going to be warm. All those creams are going to mix in there together. It's going to be nice and savory. First one, Greek plain yogurt. Ruth, go ahead and add maybe about 2 thirds of that in there. What do you think, Chef Elias? About 2 thirds of that. Greeks plain yogurt in there. Next item, light mayo. You can use a regular mayo or a light mayo in there. Everything we have here, I say the same thing every time. I'm not going to Whole Foods. I'm not going to a specialty store, Market Basket, Shaw's, Stop and Shop. You can get the same items every store you go to, guys, OK? All the plain grocery stores is where we shop for all these stores. Yes? You have a question? Yeah, if you don't like mayo, do your Greek yogurt. It's fine. Yeah, stick with the Greek yogurt. You're just doing something to make this a little creamy, OK? Yeah. So Ruth, you got your Greek yogurt in there. Got a little bit of light mayo. Go ahead and add some salt and some pepper in there. Fresh scallion, guys, goes a long way. Color, crunch, a little bit of light onion flavor. We're not putting white onion in there. You could do red onion in there, right? You could do shallots in there. Shallots are a, a nice, light red onion. So add those, those scallions in there to there. Cilantro. Everybody familiar with cilantro? Soft tacos, Spanish food, all sorts of Latino foods. It's awesome. Don't overdo it because you'll be tasting it and smelling it. But a little touch kind of blends in there. All you're doing is building flavors. You're not trying to say, oh, what is that, too much cilantro in there? You're not trying to say that. You're just building those flavors as you go. And Ruth, you're just mixing that all in there. You're doing a great job, as, as a matter of fact. Thank you. So now, guys, notice in your recipe it says queso fresco. I put that on there on purpose. Did you guys hear about Chipotle recently? Chipotle had a little case of, uh, or big case of, listeria. 
going on out west and in uh, Washington, Oregon, right? So lots of people have been getting sick lately. Uh, queso fresco is one of the items that they pulled. Queso fresco is a mild Mexican cheese, crumbles. It's a very soft, non, um, it's, it's just not a harmful cheese. You know how feta has that, that tang, that bite to it? It's just like feta when it crumbles, but it's just non-offensive, very easy to eat. So I found a farmer's cheese. You can use a mild feta. There's different grades of feta, just so you know. You can use a mild feta, but I found a farmer's cheese. Very low in sodium, very healthy for you. And this farmer's cheese, open up the package, it just crumbles right into that dish, okay? Very simple on that one. Crumble that in there, and that just gives another texture that you're building that flavor to. So Ruth, once you've added that in there, you've got a little salt and pepper in there already. Mix that up, go ahead and, go ahead and uh, Chef Elias, help her get all that into that bowl. I've got a big spoon right here, Ruth, if you wanna transfer over. You can use that, that'll probably help you out. So we're done. So notice, you roasted that corn in the oven, you mix those ingredients in there, warm, cold in the refrigerator, either way you'd like. Yes, yes. Can I use the Greek feta cheese? What about the feta? Feta cheese, Greek feta cheese inside yeah. on the side. Yeah, but I would recommend not maybe a mild that. feta so it's not so strong. No, oh yeah. yeah, but feta okay. works perfect, you know? They have the crabs inside yeah. for the feta. Yes, yes. crumble it up. Okay. Crumble it up with your hands. Don't be shy. This is one you can play with, guys, okay? Guys, this looks great. Yes. Next dish we're going to do today, we're going to get into our creamed kale with caramelized shallots. So we're going to learn a few different methods here today. We're going to talk about blanching. We're going to talk about making a roux. I'm sure some of you are wondering how to make a roux today, right? Does anybody know what a roux is? Ed, what's a roux? Butter and flour. Butter how much flour. butter, how much flour? Is it equal, the same every time? Equal amounts. Equal amounts. Always. Same thing every time. If I use a half a pound of flour, I use a half a pound of butter. Same amounts every time. I just melt the butter first. I add my flour to it, and I slowly whisk it in there to incorporate that flour once the butter is melted. Two to three minutes. We're just cooking the flavor of the flour out. But what if I cook that flour until it starts turning brown? Why do I throw it away? Do I need to? Chef Elias, what if that flour starts turning brown? Can I use that for something else? What can I use that for? Now I'm starting to use it for a brown gravy or a brown stew. So that's called a brown roux. You didn't burn it, guys. Now you're just going into things like a brown sauce or a brown stew or a brown soup or a brown gravy. That makes sense, right? Now it's starting to turn brown. So, or, you know, when you make a gumbo, you ever see a gumbo? That's a brown roux in there. They just cook that roux longer. It brings a nuttiness out of that butter. So that's, that's that roux. So Chef Elias, you can turn those up a lot, right? Let's get those cooking in there. So kale. Are we scared of kale? Who's still scared of kale? I was until I started eating kale Caesar salads, and then I got used to it. Did you guys notice that we're mixing some romaine and kale on the salad bar lately? Did you guys even notice? You didn't notice, did you? Did you notice that your romaine blend had kale in it three or five days last week? You didn't even notice, did you? But this is the, that's the goal, you know? This is my job, is to slowly slip that in on you guys. You know, this, this is how it works. And then by the end of the week, you've eaten more sensible with some of our oh-so-good items, with our wellness bar, our fruit bar. You know, you guys have the options in there to eat sensibly. And then on Friday and Saturday night, that's what I've, do I've done, you know, throughout the week is I try to eat sensibly. And then by the end of the week, I feel a little better. Or I feel like I've worked hard and now I can, I can go get that Friday night dinner and, you know, I don't feel so bad about it, you know. And then I start back over on Monday. But, yes. We do a lot of kale dishes now. Kale is our 365 seasonal vegetable of the month. So we've done a lot of kale in there. And you guys haven't even noticed. And that's, that's the job of what we do. So first thing we're going to do is we've pre-blanched this kale to avoid some time through the magic of television, right? Kale, cut the stems off. Kale used to be our garnish. Kale used to be the food for our rabbits and our gerbils and our hamsters, right, 10 years ago? Kale used to be the garnish on all of our buffets, right? Used to go to that hotel and for that Easter dinner or that Christmas dinner or the holiday dinner. 
Kale was everywhere around the carving station, wasn't it? Not anymore. Kale's what we eat now because kale's so good for you. And the less you cook it, the more nutrients it has. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the rib out of it first before you cook it or you eat it, that long stem in there, and then it's ready to go. Just chop it up. Mix it with lettuce greens at home if you're going to make a salad. You'll never know. Mix it with that vinaigrette. But if you're going to blanch it, blanching is boiling it for about 5, 10 minutes on kale, and then put it in an ice bath. What's an ice bath after it's boiled? You're just dropping it into boiled water, guys. That's it. What does that do? What does that do once I dropped it into, uh, from the boiling water into the ice bath? Stops it from cooking. What else does it do? Right, this is Justin. Justin is on his second day, guys. <laughs> This retains color once I drop that in, and it stopped cooking. So that's blanching right there. So we're going to make our roux now for this creamed kale dish. That's the sauce, kind of. We're not going to do a cheese sauce. That's the start of a roux. We're just going to make the cream for this, OK? So sauteed onions and butter. Now he's going to do about half of that flour. Go ahead and use your, your, uh, your whisk to kind of guide half of that flour in there. So we're going to eye this out. He's going to, because. No recipes, no measurements, guys, in cooking, right? This isn't baking. I said this last time. We're not scientists. I don't bake. I'm not a baker. So you can do this at home without measuring if you really wanted to. So, Justin, I'm just going to tip this up. See what happened, guys? That turned nice and coated in there. And now all he has to do is slowly whisk that in there. He's going to cook out the flour flavor. If he doesn't, you're going to taste that flour. So he needs about two to three minutes of just whisking in that flour in there. And once he has that flour cooked out, then we're going to put about two-thirds of that milk in there slowly. So if I had another pan in there, I would warm that milk up first. As it says in your recipe, it says scalded milk which just means bring the milk up to about 170, right before it simmers, and then turn it off, and then, and then slowly add that milk while you're whisking. That's two minutes after the roux has been cooked. So, caramelized shallots, while that's cooking, look how good these look. Don't those look good? If you could smell these, they smell even better than they look. So a quick caram so what's caramelization? What, what does that mean to do? Saute means to jump and cook fast. Caramelization means to bring the sugar out of something, bring the natural sugars. Onions are just onions, but when you slowly cook them, so much sugar are in onions. There's water and there's sugar in onions. They're not bitter when you caramelize them. All of this sugar comes out of them. So very quick caramelization, a teaspoon of sugar, a little bit of butter, Put them on a medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes and keep stirring them around. They're going to turn into this, guys. This is a great component. You could put this on pork loin, right, just like this. Pork loin, chicken, fish, beef, a roast, anything, just this, like this right here. So after two minutes, notice that Chef Elias is slowly pouring in that milk. If he pours it all in there too quick, it's going to lump up. It's not going to work out. So he's slowly tempering that in there. The, uh, a quick caramelization is about 15 minutes on medium heat. That's why we added a teaspoon of sugar. But a real caramelization on a low heat, two hours, guys, to do that. A real caramelization takes about two hours. And you need lots of onions. You need about 10 pounds of onions just to get that much. Just so you know, a real caramelization. But we're not trying to take all your time on Thanksgiving, are we? We're not trying to take all that time up. So. so you're doing great, Justin. Go ahead and pour all that milk in there probably, huh? Probably going to need all that. So that's caramelization. So Justin is almost done with that. Should we turn it up a little higher? All right. So we turn that up just a little bit quicker. That roux is almost done. And what he's doing in there is that's turning into a cream sauce. So next thing I have over here is, anybody know what this is? Yeah? This is nutmeg. You guys are always just shaking this out, aren't you, at home? Nutmeg, right, for your apple pies? Nutmeg has other uses. This is a real nutmeg. This is fresh. You can grate this with your box grater at home. 
This is called a microfile or a microplane. This is like one side of your box grader, right? You can just take this and file this. Put this in a little plastic container and you have fresh nutmeg all the time. This costs 99 cents at the grocery store. You know the Goya section? There's fresh cinnamon sticks. There's fresh nutmeg. There's fresh anise. 99 cents. These are sealable pouches that you can put them right in there. So that's all this is. This is a micro plane you can buy at the grocery store. This is a great stocking stuffer for those of you who are trying to be a little cookie, you know, a little foodie at home. Micro plane, guys, all right? So go ahead and grate a little bit of this nutmeg in there. A little nutmeg goes a long way. It goes too far, actually. It's like when you add too much garlic, too much nutmeg is too much nutmeg. It's too strong. So we've added just a little bit of that, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper, Justin. Go ahead and do you add any salt and pepper yet? OK, perfect. So let's go ahead and, Justin, go ahead and take your hands and just pile that kale in there. We're going to mix that kale in there. We're going to toss it in there. All of it, just pile it all in there. Justin, your job now as a second day employee at Tufts Health Plan is gonna be the hardest second day job you've ever had. You're gonna to toss that in there, and then once that's hot, Justin, you're gonna put it right back in that bowl, and you are done, okay? And then you're gonna to top it with shallots, lots and lots of shallots on top. You're gonna to bring it over to that second tong right over there beside the street corn, okay? Guys, we're going to stop Justin right there. We're going to wish him a really long life here at Tufts Health Plan because it's the best place to work ever. All right, guys? Let's give him a great big round of applause. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much for being, putting yourself out there. We appreciate it. Guys, the next dish that we're going to do today is our spinach feta sun-dried tomato stuffed mushrooms. This is a good one. I have to tell you that when you see what these look like when they're done, you're probably going to make this one the day before and then you're gonna throw them in your oven on warm, and these are gonna be either your appetizer or your dinner. I can tell you're paying attention. This is awesome. Um, these look amazing, and you could substitute little things here or there for this dish. You see the picture on that recipe? They look better than that. So, so these, are, these are a legit dish. You're gonna love these. So, baked stuffed mushrooms. Very, very simple. So first thing we have going on is sauteed onions. We, uh, we have uh, been timing this out so that our sautéed onions are ready to go already. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, we're using every bit of our mushroom. The mushroom comes with a stem, right? We're using that stem because that's going to be part of our, the base of our stuffing. We're not wasting anything. We're cutting the dirty part off. We're using the stem. And we're chopping that up. So I have those chopped stems right there. We've got some sun-dried tomatoes right at the grocery store, any old grocery store. We've got some fresh chopped garlic. We've got some baby spinach, feta cheese, Japanese panko breadcrumbs. We've got some shredded or grated Parmesan, whichever one you like. We've got some kosher salt and some cracked black pepper. So. First thing we're going to do, sautéed onions in butter. Get those nice and soft on a medium heat. Once those are translucent, which means that they turn clear or opaque, an off-white color, we're going to sauté those up. We're then going to add, go ahead and drop those in there, those mushroom stems. So we're going to make kind of a dummy mixture for you because we obviously can't bake right here. So we're going to do a little magic of television part with those stuffed mushrooms, but it's all going to be worth it, I promise you. So you've got those stuffed mushrooms right there. Or sorry, you got those mushroom stems just chopped up. No science to those. Just rough chop those stems up. Next thing you're going to add, go ahead and add a, take about a big tablespoon like that and add those to that. Just dump them right in. Perfect amount. Perfect. Go ahead and drop that back down. So sun-dried tomatoes, same thing. Rough chop. There's no science to this at all. No measurements. Notice we didn't measure a thing, guys. You know. So go ahead and mix those up in there. And then next thing we're going to do, a little bit of garlic. Take a pinch with your finger, a nice big pinch. Yep. And if you guys like roasted garlic in the oven, take those whole cloves. Take a pouch of a big square of foil. Make a tent out of it. Take those whole cloves. Squeeze a little bit of olive oil in there, some cracked salt and pepper. Make a, make a, a pouch out of it. 
Throw them in the oven for 45 minutes on 350. Whatever you're cooking in the oven, throw that pouch in there as well with a little dish underneath it. Take it out, let it cool. Now you have roasted garlic cloves. You can do like 25 cloves and use those through the whole Thanksgiving dinner. Instead of using, you know, regular garlic, start using those, you know. If you want to spread those on bread, if you want to make a garlic butter, you know, this is now you're, you're stepping it up, stepping your game up by doing one simple thing. So if we didn't want to use this fresh garlic, we could use roasted garlic instead. Simple, get, simple way to step up, your, step up your cooking skills for the weekend, right? So baby spinach. Baby spinach cooks down. This is basically water, a little chlorophyll for color, and some great flavor. So you can add as much or as little of that as you want. If you like spinach, if you like arugula, if you like, you know, Swiss chard, you can add anything you want to, those, to that spinach right there. So you're doing great. So once we add that spinach in there, we can turn the heat off. We're done. So we're going to mix, give that a nice mix all the way around in there, Aisha. You're doing fantastic. Um, it smells really good. I can smell the sun-dried tomatoes, right? I can smell the garlic. I can smell the mushrooms. I can smell the onions cooking. So we turn everything off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add about just like you did with the, uh, the sun-dried tomatoes, add that amount of feta cheese. Now we're going to make the, mix, the rest of the mixture. Heat is off. We're going to add feta cheese, about a tablespoon. We're going to add a little bit more than you just added a feta of our Japanese breadcrumbs. That's the binder, right? That's the breadcrumb is what's going to make it all stick together. A little more, same amount. Do it again. No measurements, guys. You can't really mess this up. Don't be nervous. Guys, you can, great point. This can be a stuffed pepper recipe too, couldn't it? This could be a great stuffed pepper recipe. You can make tur turkey meatballs this way too. Why not, right? Substitute with ground beef. And then take that turkey meatball recipe that you just made and stuff that in the stuffed pepper. I like it. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. So we're done with that. So guys, here is your... Here's your stuffing for that. See how simple that was? It's done. You could, take this, you could take this mixture now, full of color, ton of flavor with that feta cheese and the garlic and sun-dried tomatoes. You could throw it in the refrigerator now in a Ziploc bag, in the freezer. Now it's there for a month or two in the freezer. Pull it out when you need it to be ready and thaw it out. Chef Elias, through the magic of television, has made a great big batch of these up. I know, I know. Um, look at these guys. Don't these look amazing? Room temperature, as an appetizer, part of your dinner, hot, whatever you guys want. I think that these are a fantastic dish. These are not bad for you to eat. Um, I think these are great. This can be a great vegetarian meal with a salad and you know uh, something else to go with it. So. Great job, Aisha. I think you did fantastic. Guys, stuffing these, just make sure you overstuff them. Put them on the sheet pan with a little bit of olive oil on a cookie sheet. Overstuff them. Put a little bit more of that Parmesan cheese on top after you stuff it because that Parmesan cheese will bake over the top. 15 minutes or so in the oven at 350. They're done. Pull them out. Let them sit a little bit because they're a mushroom. Same thing like spinach. It's probably 70 to 80% water too. You know, all these vegetables are filled with water. So, so this is what we're going to do today. You guys remember this one? A couple of you that came to a cooking demo, I think it was last year. Do you remember that we taught you guys how to peel a pomegranate inside the water? Because if you peel this pomegranate right now and you break this, what's going to happen? I'm wearing white. I've never been married. I, I, this is, I'm, I'm very pure. So it's going to pop all over the place. I'm going to get this pomegranate juice. It's not going to come out. So cut a pomegranate in half, put it in a bucket of water. And there are YouTube videos about this one, about the quickest way to peel a pomegranate. So once you put it in water, Chef Leas, go ahead and show her. Put it in water, break it in half, break it again. And you can break it again. And with your thumbs, just start pushing all those pomegranate seeds out inside that water. And what's happening when they're doing that inside that water? 
What do you guys see that's happening in there? Right. All those pomegranate seeds are dropping to the bottom. Can I show them? What's happening in there? All the seeds are dropping to the bottom, aren't they? What's staying at the top? The pomegranate shell. All that, all that white stuff, that's called the pith, P-I-T-H. All that white pith stays at the top. All the pomegranate seeds are going to the bottom. So you can obviously strain it right out, pull that pith out of there, strain it right out, and in 60 seconds, you have a half a pomegranate. Do you know how long it would take for you to pick a half a pomegranate by hand? It's 10, 15 minute job, isn't it? So clean, no mess, drain that water out of there. There's a foolproof trick for peeling your pomegranate. Shauna, do you feel like you're more knowledgeable now? Definitely. Awesome, awesome. Um, you can take a half day and go home, okay? <laughs> Um, just tell your supervisor. You went. All right. Um, so we can stop that trick now, and let's go on to the avocado. Anybody feel like they know how to cut an avocado? Yeah? Feel good? Any avid avocado eaters in here? Who loves avocado? Right. Pretty much everybody loves avocado, right? And it's, it's just so popular that, that it's gained so much traction. So... What state in America produces the most avocado for the world? No, not Texas. Huh? California. California produces 90% of the avocados for the entire world. Did you guys know that? Unfortunately, California hit some very bad droughts this year. That's why you don't have strawberries this week in the cafe. Did you guys notice that? Did you guys notice that kiwi is on our fruit bar this week? which is a great substitute, obviously. You know, it's not every day you get to eat kiwi on the fruit bar, but, you know, the droughts, they went from a famine to a feast of rain. So every, the avocado is now outsourced to Peru. Right now it's Mexico, but Mexico fortunately has some great avocados. So sometimes you get your avocado at the grocery store. It's hard as a rock. Can you do anything with that that day? You can't do a thing with it, right? Anybody have a trick for that? Make it ripe quicker? Paper bag, I heard that, paper bag. Put it in a paper bag right back in your cabinet or in a warm, dark, dark place for a couple of days. And yeah, put it in the oven, right? It's a dark place, right? It's a little bit warmer. Put in that paper bag for a couple of days, it's gonna ripen right up and soften up for you. So another trick, so Chef Elias, Shauna, no knife. You can show kids this, so. All right, you guys are gonna do this together, so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead and give her that one. So go ahead and help her out with that one. So what you're going to do, you're going to hold the avocado in the meaty part of your hand, the base at the bottom. You're going to just push it through like this, and you're going to peel all the way around that avocado. Like so. Spatula down. Twist. Pull off. Simple, right? Put the side without the seed in there. Nope. Nope. Next you're going to do is you're going to hit it really hard. You're going to hit the Nice. Twist. Pull. Shauna is amazing at this. So this seed, what can you do with this seed now? Anything? You can throw it out. Or you could throw it back into your guacamole, which we have done, because that retains the color. Did you know that? Another trick. This retains the color in your guacamole. We've had this sitting for three hours. Notice it's all still green. Gua avocado oxidizes immediately when it, hits, when it hits the air, the oxygen. It turns brown immediately. So this seed, if you put it back in the avocado, just make sure nobody eats it because they're not going to have fun obviously. It's going to break some teeth, you know, and they're going to choke. But this retains the color back in your guacamole, just so you know. No, you mix it right in. You mix it in like it's part of the ingredients, okay? And then right before you serve it, pull it out, all right? This retains your color, guys. You can go a half a day extra. So next thing we're going to do, so we have that. Very simple. We're going to do four slices. One, two, 
three, four, five slices sideways. Two, three, four, five. Next thing we do with our spat, this is a cake spatula, guys. We're going to go all the way around the sides. Look, guys, my entire avocado just came out. What do I have left? Just the skin. It's garbage, right? Garbage. I don't need it anymore. I have 100% edible yield from my avocado that's completely ripe. I have no waste on there. Shauna, show them your skin now, Shauna. She's a rookie, never done it before, okay? So guys, this is foolproof. There's nothing got messed up. Shauna did it her first time. Her pit came out of there. She peeled it right. She never used a knife, so she wasn't afraid to cut herself at all. She can show a child this. This is something that you can take to your Thanksgiving dinner. You can all hang out in the kitchen. You can say, hey, we're doing a demo here, guys, you know? So these are fun things that you can do next week with your family for a half an hour and say, come on, let's go play, guys, you know? Well, if you don't like football, something fun to do, okay? So, Shauna, now for the best part. We have a whole bowl by the magic of TV that Chef Elias was nice enough to go in there. So Shauna, why don't you take that spatula right there? We made a lot of guacamole, right? Because everybody loves it. We have about 22 avocados there. These are the other two right here. Mix all that in there. Next thing. Yeah, throw those in there too, right? Let's add more guacamole to that. Next thing, pomegranate seeds. Shauna, just go ahead and throw those in there. Dump them in. Chef Elias is going to chop up a little bit more cilantro. What did we say about cilantro earlier? Don't overdo it. A little bit goes a long way. You don't want to smell or taste just cilantro because it just kind of ruins it, you know? Unless you're a super fan, which there's not that many of, don't overdo it, guys. You know? You just want to build your flavors. You're not stepping over the flavors. Does that make sense? Okay. So we have our pomegranate. We have our red onion. It says white onion on there, but you can do shallots. You can do scallions. You can do red onion. Notice I'm substituting. I did that on purpose. So to show you, this is not baking. It does not need to be a precise recipe, right? So how about, what, one-third of those onions? Maybe one-third of those red onions. No recipes. No measuring. Jalapeno, mild to wild, serrano peppers, another one. I didn't go by the recipe on purpose to show you. Consider your crowd. Do they like spicy foods? Is there a lot of children? Then just do a little bit. So I'd say we just maybe like 12 slices. Just use your spatula and just push a, just push a small portion in there. Those are jalapenos. If you're cutting jalapenos, do it last. Or if you're doing it first, you know, try not to get too many seeds in there. The seeds are the spiciest part, the stem is the spiciest part, and that, that, that the skin inside, the vein that's going down there, that's the spiciest part, guys. Wash your hands afterwards, clean the cutting board, clean your knife afterwards. You don't want any mistakes on that because you could rub your eyes. You could rub your skin, you know. You might have to call the, uh, um, the poison control center and say, hey, I have a problem. So if you see me afterwards, I'll tell you a story, okay? It's not PC. Um, so anyway, we roll some lemons on the table. You can throw them in the microwave for 10 seconds. Um, that's all you got to do. That juices it up, makes it soft, right? So it's nice and juicy. Sometimes you want to, there's some seeds in there. You hold your hand underneath it, squeeze the lemon juice in there. Lots of lemon juice is also a color preserver, right? Citric acid preserves color too. Stops things from turning brown as well as gives flavor. How about a little salt in there too? This is radicchio. Radicchio is a crunch. That's all this does. It does not have much flavor. Generally, you don't eat a radicchio salad. You could, but it's just a portion of a salad. But let's add this just for a little crunch in there, okay? You can get one head of radicchio. You can use a half a head for your recipe, you know? Sometimes people take the cups, the leaves of radicchio and use that as a bowl, like on a cheese tray or a seafood you know, tray. They'll use that radicchio lettuce leaf as the bowl of something, you know, instead of using an actual bowl. So we put that in there for crunch, a little bit of black pepper, and then Shauna, I want you and Chef Elias to mix that up. Maybe use your gloves. It's probably going to be the best way to mix that up in there. And a little bit of cilantro in there. Mix that up, 
and then I want you to pile it as high as you can, like a mountain sauna, on that black plate, garnish with a little piece of, a little chunk of cilantro on the side for garnish, because we eat with our eyes, right? I see something and I go, whoa, I want to, I want to eat that. That's, that's how I eat, you know. Uh, obviously, I have some experience, you know. So how does that look, guys? Those pomegranates are going to be a nice crunch. We're going to top that off with some toasted walnuts. How did I toast these? You can throw them in a sheet pan for five minutes just so they get toasted. Or just put them in a little egg or a saute pan. Just low heat. Just give them a little toss while you're doing something else. About four minutes until you see a little bit of color start to get on those. Give them a nice chop. Shauna, go ahead and top with about half those walnuts. See that mountain, guys? If I saw that hit my party, that's amazing. And another thing I want to tell you about this guacamole, if I serve it with pita chips and I serve it with uh, um, tortilla chips, I'm going to eat what you put in front of me at Thanksgiving, right? I'm a guy. If you put that down in front of a bowl of potato chips in front of me at Thanksgiving in a football game, I'm going to eat that. But if you put a big, huge, colorful crudite in front of me and this guacamole as guys, we're going to eat that too. But it's your choice as the people that make all this food and to take home what you've learned today to put that, gu that guacamole with that crudite instead of those pita chips or those tortilla chips to put down that in front of us because we're going to eat whatever you put in front of us. Am I right? Right. So you put that crudite in front of me, I'm eating that. You put those chips in front of me, I'm eating that too. Make the decision for yourselves to make that balance. Add one of these great dishes in front of us, and everybody give Shauna a great big round of applause. Let's thank Working Well today for, in conjunction, we always have such great things we do together. Be Well, our entire Tufts Health Plan umbrella. Chef Elias, the 705 Cafe team. Guys, I couldn't be more happy. Everybody help yourselves. We're here for questions. Thanks so much, everybody, for coming out today. Have a great day.